Today I've got a nice differential equation that's from the integral, oh, I mean the differential equations suggester. And this involves a lot of neat substitutions and passing to derivatives in terms of different variables. So the differential equation in question is a second order nonlinear differential equation given by y double prime plus e to the y equals zero. And so notice if we had y prime plus e to the y equals zero, we would have a so-called separable differential equation, which is the type of differential equation that you can solve maybe in the first or second day of a differential equations class, whereas this one is much more difficult. So the reason reason it's a second order differential equation is because we have a second derivative here. And the reason it's nonlinear is because our dependent variable y is wrapped up in a nonlinear function, in this case an exponential function. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce some notation that will simplify our lives. And that is, well, let's first just remember what we mean by y prime. We mean the derivative with respect to the root variable, which we're taking to be x. So we're considering y to be a variable of x. And then y double prime is clearly the second derivative with respect to x. Now, if we had a function with respect to t, which we will along the way via a substitution, then we'll write f dot to be the derivative of f with respect to t. So this is like standard maybe in some courses on differential ge geometry or in physics. Okay, so let's get going. So the first thing that I'll do is make a substitution. And the obvious substitution is to let some variable equal e to the y. And that's exactly what we'll do. And that variable will be t. So let's set t equal to e to the y. So let's notice by the kind of ch chain of variables, we have t depending on y depending on x. So that means that it makes sense to take the derivative of t with respect to x. So t prime is something that makes sense and that is dp, dt by dx. So that's maybe just important to keep in mind as we move forward. So keeping that in mind, since t depends on x, and it in fact depends on x via this exponential function, let's take the derivative of t with respect to x. And we can do that via the chain rule. So we have t prime will be equal to the derivative of e to the y with respect to x. But by the chain rule, that gives us a y prime times e to the y. So notice it's essentially the derivative of this with respect to y and then the derivative of y with respect respect to x. But now we can use that to solve for y prime in terms of t. Let's see what that'll look like. Here we have y prime equals t prime over e to the y, but that's equal to t prime over t, given the fact that t is equal to e to the y. Okay, so let's put a box around that because that's going to be pretty important. But notice that our differential equation is a second order differential equation, so we have a y double prime in there. So let's take the derivative of y prime to achieve y double prime. So we have y double prime is the derivative with respect to x of t prime over t. Now we can use the quotient rule to do that pretty easily. That'll give us t times t double prime minus t prime squared all over t squared. Again, like I said, by the quotient rule. Now what I'll do is plug this into our expression over here, along with our substitution t equals y prime, and we've completely changed our differential equation to one dealing with y to one dealing with t. Okay, so let's do that. So y double prime will be this. We have t times t double prime minus t prime squared over t squared, and then plus t equals zero, okay? But now we'd probably like to clear our denominators. That would be kind of a standard thing to do. That'll give us t times t double prime minus t prime squared plus t cubed equals zero, like that. So that's still a nonlinear second order differential equation, 
but it doesn't have this transcendental function, this e to the y in it. It only has algebraic functions. So hopefully that means it's a little bit easier to work with. So as a brief summary, our first substitution took us from a second order nonlinear differential equation with a transcendental function, but now we've got a second order nonlinear differential equation with only algebraic type functions. So now we'd like to do some sort of additional substitutions on this so that we could possibly turn this into a first order differential equation. So in other words, do a reduction of order substitution. So if we want to do a reduction of order substitution, well, a kind of a clear way to do that would be to set a new variable equal to t prime. And that's exactly what we'll do. So maybe I'll call that variable w. So let's now set w equal to t prime. But now let's notice that sets up another chain rule type functional dependence of w with respect to x. So we'll put that in a box over here. So let's notice that w depends on t, so it depends on t via t prime, and then t depends on x. So now if we wanted to take the, the derivative of that equation with respect to x, well, it's pretty straightforward how to do that on the right-hand side. We would write that as t double prime. But on the left-hand side, we need to be a little bit more careful because the derivative of w with respect to x will go through t. So let's maybe write that over here as a little note. We have t double prime, so it'll be the derivative of w with respect to t. Let's recall that we're using the notation w dot for that, times the derivative of t with respect to x. So let's maybe just reiterate what's going on here. t double prime is in fact the same thing as dw dx, and this is dw dx t times dt dx. So rewriting it with the Leibniz notation for the chain rule, we have that which is like a little bit more familiar. We see that the dt's, they seem like they cancel, but of course that's just built into the notation of the chain rule. And what we did is instead of writing dw dx, we wrote t double prime because that's the relationship over there. But the next thing that we can do is notice that t prime is equal to w, so that means we can rewrite this whole thing as w w times w dot, where I've changed the order there. Okay, so that's starting to look good. And now we can take this object that we've just created and plug it into this equation and see what happens. And that's the last thing that we'll do on this board before we move on to the next one. So let's see, we're replacing t double prime with w w dot. So that's gonna give us t times w times w dot for this term minus t prime squared, but notice that t prime squared is w squared. So we've got w squared and then finally plus t cubed equals zero. So we have something that looks like that. And that's actually pretty good news because now that's a first order differential equation where w is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. So maybe we can get some use out of that. Of course, it's a nonlinear differential equation because we have w squared, but perhaps we can do another substitution to get rid of that w squared. And that's what we'll do at the start of the next board. So this is where we left off. We made a substitution t equals e to the y and w equals t prime, and that transformed this second order nonlinear differential equation to the following first order nonlinear differential equation, where now it's a derivative with respect to t instead of x. We have t w w dot minus w squared plus t cubed is equal to zero. Now we're gonna perform one final substitution that will get us down to a first order linear differential equation, and then we'll solve that and work our way out of this entire situation. So the last substitution will be equal to, will be u equals w squared. And we pick motivation for that by the fact that we have a w squared right here. So that will help us maybe linearize this nonlinear differential equation. Okay, but now if u is equal to w squared, that tells us that u dot, so the derivative of u with respect to t, notice here we want to deal with u dot instead of u prime, the derivative with respect to t instead of x, because at this stage right here, we can temporarily forget 
that everything was in terms of x at the beginning. Okay, so anyway, u dot is equal to 2 w times w dot just by the chain rule, right? But now we can make some substitutions. Notice we have t times w w dot, but that means this w w dot is 2 or 1 half times u dot. So let's rewrite this a little bit. So we have t over 2 times u dot for that and then minus u plus t cubed equals zero. So we've got something that looks a little bit like that. And then next we'll move the t cubed over to the other side because that's the standard format for a first order linear differential equation. That leaves us with t over two u dot minus u equals minus t cubed. And at this stage we can find an integrating factor, but to find an integrating factor we'll multiply by, or I should say to produce that, we'll multiply by, let's see, 2 over t cubed. So let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with u dot over t squared and then minus 2u over t cubed equals minus 2. So that's where we're left. But now we can make a little bit of a jump right here and notice by the product rule we can see that that is equal to the derivative with respect to t of, let's see what it looks like. It's going to be u over t squared, u over t squared. Because notice the derivative of t, or derivative of u, will be u dot over t squared. And then the derivative of t to the negative 2, which is essentially t squared, will give us this thing right here. Okay, so let's put a little box around that. And that gives us a really, really simple first order differential equation. We have the derivative with respect to t of u over t squared is equal to negative 2. But now from here, we can take the antiderivative with respect to t of both sides. That gives me u over t squared is equal to minus 2t plus a constant. And for reasons that we'll see later, I'll call that constant a squared. But then from there, we can easily solve for u. And we'll see that u is equal to, let's see, a squared times t squared minus 2 times t cubed. So that's by multiplying all of these things around. So just to reiterate, that is what u is equal to, but now we need to work our way out of the substitutions. So we found u, now the next thing that we can do is find w, and then we can find t, and then we can finally find y. Okay, so the easiest one is this. So if u is equal to w squared, that means w is equal to the square root of u. So let's write that down. So we have w is equal to the square root of a squared times t squared minus 2t cubed. Let's notice that we can factor out a t from that because we have a t squared term here and a t squared term here. That gives me t times the square root of a squared minus minus 2 times t. So something like that. So that's what we're left with for w. But now let's recall that w is equal to t prime, but t prime is dt by dx. But now we can perform separation of variables on that, and we'll see that dx is equal to, and this is abusing notation, is equal to dt over t times the square root of a minus 2t. Now we can take the antiderivative of both sides, and that will give us x plus a new constant, so I'll call that new constant b, is equal to the antiderivative of dt over t times the square root of a squared minus 2 times t. But now we need to take care of that antiderivative, which is a little bit of work on its own, and we'll sketch that at the top of the next board. So this is where we left ourselves off. So I erased all of the substitutions that we've worked our way out of, but we still have the substitution t equals e to the y, and then this relationship of t with x given by this antiderivative. Now, how can we calculate that antiderivative? Well, we can do it with another substitution, as you might guess. And the substitution that we will make here is z, so I'll call it z, equals the square root of a squared minus 
2t like that and then maybe i won't work out all of the details but if you have z equals the square root of a squared minus 2t then what you end up with is t is equal to a squared minus z squared over 2 so something like that but from that we can calculate dt and then make a complete substitution of this integral so after all of that let's see what we have so we'll end up with, I'll bring this out front, so we'll have a minus 2, and then a dz over a squared minus z squared. And that's a fairly simple, simple integral to calculate using um, partial fraction decomposition. Again, we're really into the weeds here, so I won't worry about doing that. And what you end up with is 1 over a times the natural log of 1 minus z over a minus one, the natural log of 1 plus z over a. But then let's recall that z is equal to that thing right there, but we'll make that substitution kind of at the very end. So now we can use natural log rules to bring this together, and we'll end up with the 1 over a times the natural log of, this will be a minus z over a plus z. So I'll let you guys work out the details, but that's fairly straightforward using just logarithm rules. So let's notice that bringing this down, we have x plus b. I'm actually going to change that to a lowercase b. It doesn't really matter, but for now I'm going to change that to a lowercase b is equal to 1 over a natural log of all of that stuff right there. Now I'll multiply through by the capital A. That will give me ax plus little b times a. I'm going to call that b hat maybe. So that's just a new value for b equals the natural log of a minus z over a plus z. Then from here we can exponentiate both sides. That will give us e to the ax plus b hat, but that's the same thing as e to the ax times e to the b hat. I'll call that e to the b hat capital B like this will be equal to a minus z over a plus z. And then from here we can solve for z and what you end up with is z is equal to a minus ab times e to the ax over let's see one plus b e to the ax so that's what z is but notice that z is equal to this a squared minus 2t and then t is equal to e to the y okay so we're almost done we just have a couple more like computation steps and then we'll finish it off Okay, so this is where we left ourselves on the last board, but let's recall that z is in fact equal to the square root of a squared minus 2t like this. So squaring both sides, we'll see that a squared minus 2t is equal to all of this squared. So a minus a b e to the ax 1 plus b e to the ax quantity squared like that. Then after that, we'll see that t is equal to, so again, I'm going to leave some steps out. I think this is sort of like good enough here. This is equal to 2 a squared b e to the ax over, let's see, 1 plus b e to the ax quantity squared. So that's t. But now let's recall that t is equal to e to the y, which means y is equal to the natural log of t. And that finally gives us our answer. So we have y is equal to the natural log of all of this stuff. 2a squared b e to the ax over 1 plus b e to the ax quantity squared. And that's a good place to stop.